Get your decade ahead horoscope now at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of August 2019. Looking at life and love. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing month it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. And it is as we start the month and as we end the month that we will do so on new moons. That is a powerful symbolism in and of itself for a month of new beginnings. Whereas the new moon, as we start the month, has some mixed feelings around it. That is because it is having a conversation of tension with Uranus. Things could change very quickly in ways that we're not sure how we feel about right away. It is as we end the month that we do so with a supremely harmonious uh, new moon. So there's a lot to talk about here, the full moon in the middle of the month as well. So let's start with right out of the gate. And so this new moon that starts the month happens right around the first of the month. Now you do want to give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. So it's energy we're feeling as we enter into the month. And it is happening for you in a part of the sky that has to do with a few different things. We're looking at siblings, cousins, and neighbors, and communications of all kinds are covered here as well, whether spontaneous, whether synchronistic, whether written, email, uh, letters, all of that covered in this part of the sky. Now this new moon is going to be hand in hand with Venus and speaking in a tension uh, conversation. Now this is with the planet Uranus, which has to do with shocks and surprise and uncertainty. And so there is this energy there that does suggest that very quickly we may find ourselves either in a conversation or needing to have a conversation in a spontaneous moment where we have to think very fast and we're not sure how we feel about it. Now it's nothing to worry about really, like nothing is ever anything to worry about. Doesn't matter if you worry or not, what matters is what you do, of course. But the energy does start to transform as we move further into the month. And so whatever it is that could feel challenging as we begin the month, as we move further into the month, about a week in, is when we have a lot more harmonious and hopeful energy that starts to open up. And so the key is not to allow one moment to have so much power, one uh, email, one letter, uh, one conversation. Now, a part of this also can be that a sibling, cousin, or neighbor uh, has news or has some developments uh, that come as a surprise, and you may have mixed feelings around that. There's a lot of love, of course, that's Venus hanging out there, but there may also be this element of surprise that uh, feels like a challenge. Whatever it is, it may or may not have anything to do with you at all, but regardless, know that you will find that moment once we move past the energy right around that new moon, once we start moving further into the month, you will find that moment to have a heart and a heart and to find each other on the same page. Now, as we navigate to the middle of the month, that is when we are going to have this month's full moon, but it isn't just about the full moon, it's about what is leading up to it. In the days leading up to the full moon, we are going to have two planets, two powerful planets changing directions. One is Jupiter going direct. The other is Uranus going retrograde. And under the light of the full moon, Mercury will leave shadow. So all of these are huge celestial moments. And then you add to it the emotion of a full moon, well, it ends up being that much more important of a time. This full moon is happening in fellow air sign Aquarius. And that can be really good because that means you're able to use this energy that much more to your advantage. It is standing across the sky from Mars and Venus. So both Mars and Venus at the time of this full moon are in uh, pretty concentrated parts of the sign that they are in. Um, what that means is their energy is that much stronger. And what that suggests for you is that a need to compromise, to consider another perspective is going to be strong as well. With Uranus just changing directions, its energies is that much stronger. And so there is this unpredictable factor with us still as it is in the early part of the month, but there's also a lot of hope. There are really helpful people on your side. That really is thanks to Jupiter moving forward. It's as if you may align with someone, you may have a conversation with someone, and you may end up feeling like someone is so on your side to help you navigate this time, 
to your advantage. And so this full moon happening in a part of the sky for you that has to do with long distance travel, immigration, citizenship, higher learning, and legal matters and political matters as well. It is a full moon. It brings things to fruition, to culmination. It allows endings to take place. So it isn't that something new out of nowhere is just gonna show up, even with that Uranian energy, but chances are this is gonna be a moment where you can find resolution on one of these matters, especially if they have been ongoing. With Uranus turning retrograde, and even though, yes, that Uranian energy is strong, and what it essentially means is when a planet turns retrograde, its energies turn inward. They become a lot more personal. And so you are looking at yourself, examining yourself more deeply as to where it is that you can own the change you wish to experience. And there is this connection, a natural connection between Uranus and this full moon as well, given that it is the ruling planet of this full moon. So that's a lot of astro talk there, right? I know if you're not a student of astrology, you may feel like I'm throwing out all these terminologies and all these associations, but all of that is to say it matters. <laughs> given that Uranus, given that full moon, what is happening in terms of your understanding of your place in the world, whether that's a philosophical understanding or a literal understanding, is very much on the surface for you. It may be something that you are trying to figure out right now with these particular areas that I mentioned, but some of the most powerful occurrences, some of the most powerful developments that are gonna take place are gonna happen as a result of you turning within looking at what it is that you really want to do, where you really want to be, what it is that you really believe. This is a source of power. I would also add though, with Uranus going retrograde, just like it suggests with retrograde, it's about going back, going within. And it is also possible with this full moon that it is going to invite you to take a little bit of a step back or maybe two steps back to understand a situation more clearly. Again, it very likely will be an ongoing thing, but to understand it a little bit more clearly so that you can then figure out and formulate your best pathway forward. There is the energy there for compromise. There is the energy there for negotiation. If you are willing to go into it with confidence, given that Mars and that Venus, if you're willing to be confident and yet listen, you can find a lovely, in some cases lovely, in some cases perhaps not lovely is the right word, but you certainly can find a resolution that sits right in your soul. Now it is as we navigate to the end of the month that we have a new moon. We will end the month on a new moon. And this is such a different energy from the earlier lunar events this month. This new moon is happening hand in hand in the sky with Mercury and Venus and Mars. That is some concentrated energy right there. And it is speaking in supreme harmony with Uranus. Now, whereas as we started the month, that new moon spoke in a conversation of tension with Uranus, and there was that surprise factor. Again, mixed feelings around the surprises. It is as we get to this new moon that we are delighted and excited about what changes for us quickly. For you, this new moon is happening in a part of the sky that has to do with your understanding of the past, connecting with people from your past. It has to do with your home in terms of where it is that you live, buying, selling, moving, new roommate, all of that covered here. And this is also a part of the sky that has to do with your family of origin and your parents in particular. And so there is gonna be this sense, a feeling of a fresh start in these regards and a feeling of fresh and new opportunities that delight you, that surprise you. And very likely it will be part of what feels as if there's just good karma with you at this time, good fortunate karma, that things can change, they can change quickly, and they can change in ways that you love, particularly in these particular areas. Now, where it comes to matters of love, it really is all about that Jupiter. Jupiter in your opposite sign, moving forward. If you have felt for the last few months as Jupiter was going retrograde, uh, that there might've been some stagnation in terms of what was developing for you in love, it is gonna be this move of Jupiter that helps you to feel like you're starting to slowly but surely gain momentum. 
Jupiter will be in your opposite sign right into December, the first days of December. So you've got a few more months of this energy and this is where you are going to get the best of it this month. We're going to have a high moment in this energy uh, just before uh, Jupiter goes direct. As Jupiter is standing still in the sky, it will reach out and speak in supreme harmony with the sun. This tends to magnify uh, that Jupiterian energy, solar energy, that much more. It brings heat, it brings passion, it brings a sense of greater possibility. And with this Jupiter in your opposite sign, you are now setting up a few months of just wonderful, uh, a wonderful sense of connection with others, a wonderful sense of abundance with others where it comes to matters of love. So if you are open to meeting someone new, I do think that it is going to be uh, right in the middle of the month. And increasingly, as Jupiter slows down more and more, stands still and goes direct, well, it is gonna be mid-month that Jupiter's energies are that much more powerful. And it is very possible that someone that you met in the first couple months of the year, in some way could find their way back around, or you end up connecting with them. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. Uh, it could also be someone new that you connect with now, and it feels uh, like something with a lot of potential. If you are someone who's just getting to know someone, if you've just started dating someone, this is a powerful time as well. If it is that this is the person for you, that will be abundantly clear once we get to that full moon. But if it is that this is not the person for you, that will be clear as well. And that may be part of how this full moon is realized in your life, where you come to understand your own ideals and where it is that perhaps this situation needs to come to a close. Now, for those of you, which I do think will be the majority of you who feel like this is the person for you, this can be a time when it starts to feel like that much more love and that much more loving. It can start to feel as if you truly are part of a shared connection. And for those of you in an established bond, um, having Jupiter move forward in your opposite sign can be really good, even just in terms of your partner. So just their life can feel like it starts to get better. They can start to feel like they're gaining momentum or moving forward and things that matter to them most. At the same time though, this can be really nice for your connection as well and for your relationship. When Jupiter moves through your opposite sign, it tends to take your relationship from one place to another place. Now, either that other place is a much uh, deeper and better and more meaningful place. It can bond two people that much closer together. Uh, but what also can happen, but it tends to happen early on in this cycle, is that um, if two people are not meant to be together, then those relationships can dissolve in healthy ways. Chances are, if you've made it to here, <laughs> uh, like at the midpoint or just beyond the midpoint of this year, of Jupiter moving through your opposite sign, well, chances are this is gonna be one of those moments where the two of you feel that much more connected and that much more in love. What I love about this month for you, well, look, there's a lot here, but I am gonna say that new moon, I think that really is the big news for most signs out there uh, because it is that new moon at the very end of the month that brings with it delight that brings with it quick change. And really this can feel like a lucky energy. If you are someone who works with homes or from home, you are gonna find this to be that much more a prosperous time. But anybody can benefit from this energy. Wherever it is that you are hoping for changes, right where you are, on the ground on which you stand, well, this is where life is about to delight you. Well, thank you so much for watching. You can get a video like this every week by logging on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. It'll be a great month. Enjoy.